Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do another demolition derby build. I've had a few people been asking me why haven't I done more, so we're going to do a, do a new one now. I did a couple other demolition derby builds and I've got good response from people who've watched. A couple of people have requested for me to make another one. And I've been busy, but now I've found the time. And I've decided to take this 61 Chevy Impala and turn this into our next Demolition Derby build. This is from the Fast and Furious series by Hot Wheels. Nice big trunk area. This will be perfect for our next Derby car, I do believe. First thing we'll do is we'll drill out the post, get it taken apart, find a new set of wheels, and uh, start fabricating. Let's get going. All right, if you're following along at home, I always recommend wearing ear protection and eye protection whenever using power tools. I've got everything on, now I'm ready to go. I have this pointy little file from this set of files and sometimes you can work it around the edge there and get the little ring to snap off after you've drilled it and it'll come loose. Oh, we had a nice gray interior which we might be scrapping that for some NASCAR seats if I can find another set. I think we're going to take this front axle off. I don't like how low the front end sets so we're going to raise the height of the front end possibly the back end as well just a little bit so these wheels will be coming off which I can use the same file to bend these little prongs that hold the pen in place once you bend those prongs up with this plastic chassis very easy with the plastic chassis um, if it was the metal chassis we would have to use the Dremel tool but with these, they'll come right off with a little prying tool such as this. All right. We're not going to no longer need the windows. Those will go in a box of parts. The interior will probably go in the same box of parts. The only thing we're going to be keeping is our chassis and our body. All right. Let's go find a set of wheels for this thing. Alright, I found some matchbox wheels that I've been saving for a while. Kind of look like truck tires. I figured those would be good for demolition derby. I see a lot of guys using truck tires if they can get away with it. So that's what we're going to use. And we'll give it a little bit of a raised look. I don't want it to look like a 4x4 truck, but I am going to raise it a little bit because most derby cars are, are raised if they can get away with it. With air shocks or whatever. So we will have a little bit of a higher stance once we get the wheels on there. I think these wheels look good on there. Would make a nice 4x4. Maybe we should do that in another build. Okay. be to get our wheels permanently mounted to the chassis and the way I'm going to do that is we're going to mount them on the bottom of the chassis rather than the top of the chassis like they are from the factory we want to get some height on the car so we're going to put our axles on the bottom of the chassis we're going to take our Dremel tool and excavate this area out where you see the pumpkin and the axle area. I want that to be all smooth. Same with the front part where you can see the front clip and the oil pan. I want to smooth that area down as well. We'll take the Dremel tool and do that. And we're going to excavate those areas because we're going to take this red straw from a WD-40 can 
yes it's from WD-40 can I use these all the time for axles and other things once we get that area excavated out we'll be able to place our axle our new axle in those areas once we have the axle in place then we'll be able to take the pins or metal axle from the wheels and those will slide right inside our straw giving us something to mount the wheels to okay it sounds more complicated than it is just watching the video will show you how it's done and then you can repeat the same process yourself if you're going to use a Dremel tool I recommend wearing some eye protection and gloves I usually don't wear gloves but I definitely wear the eye protection you do not want a piece of metal or a broken Dremel tool blade making contact with your eyes that could be devastating so wear eye protection please I use this plastic face shield if I'm not using glasses I will wear this at least and it will give you some sort of protection for your eyes and your entire face for that matter so I always wear this when I'm using the Dremel also if you don't want to have hearing damage or ringing in your ears I also recommend wearing earplugs whenever using any kind of power tool especially the Dremel tool so I will also be wearing earplugs that is a must for me if you don't have some earplugs some toilet tissue stuffed in your ears is better than nothing keep that in mind all right, I've got my eye and ear protection on, so I'm ready to go. All right, I did a little bit of that work off of camera because I needed to hold it closer to my face, but you get the idea. Just slide your Dremel tool back and forth and remove the material that's in the way, trying to give you a flat surface between these two ridges. And we will do the same thing with the back and then we'll be able to cut our axles and put those in place. Alright, I've got all the area smoothed out pretty good. I am going to take a hand file and go over these two areas to get them extra flat and smooth and then we'll move on from there. This may not really be necessary, but I'd like to make sure all the birds are out of the way and just make sure it's nice and smooth. I'll do this to the front back for a little while. All right, I smoothed everything out with the file. Now we're going to take our Dremel tool and cut a slot going all the way across. Similar to what you see on the, the inside here. I want to do a, a notch in these ribs right here the same way for our red straw to fit in between same with the front I'm going to do the same in the front as I do in the back put that same notch you see on the factory side on the bottom with the Dremel tool so that's our next step Okay, just like before, I'm going to finish those out with the file and make sure they're nice and square. I mean, the file is going to take off any burrs. When you'll see after using the Dremel tool that the plastic likes to melt and collect in the corners and stuff. And this will knock any of that right off and give you a nice smooth surface. So, that's what we'll do. Okay, you can see that I put those notches on the bottom side of the chassis. That's going to let our straw rest right in between them and hold it in place. Um, you want to make sure you, your notches are square. You don't want your axle to be set in here crooked because then the car is not going to roll straight. So you're going to have to spend some time making sure that it's straight and it's the same on both sides. You don't want one side deeper than the other because then your car won't sit right either. So take your time and use the file and fine-tune those till your straws look perfectly square and level 
not one side higher than the other. Once we have those areas adjusted to where our straw fits like we want it, then we'll trim the straws down and glue them into place. Now if you were just wanting to do a regular wheel swap, you would just want to put the straw inside in the original factory position. We're only putting these on the bottom because we're doing a demolition derby car and I want it to look like it's jacked up a little bit which a lot of guys do if they can get away with it in demolition derby. They'll use air shocks or or something to get the car a little bit higher. So that's the only reason I'm putting them on the bottom right now is because we're doing the demolition derby car. But you can do the same process just to do any wheel swap. You know, in, if you wanted to have the original factory height, you wouldn't need to do all this. Just put the axles in place on the inside. But you would still need to excavate some material out of the way so the axles would fit to the factory height. Just wanted to bring that up so you can use these straws for any type of wheel swap. Now, if you're going to do a wheel swap and you don't need to shorten the axle, it's even easier. But we're going to have to shorten our axle to use these wheels. If this wasn't going to be shortened and it was this long, you would just cut your, your red straw to the length you want. And then you're going to take an X-Acto knife and slice this straw open on one side. Once it's open on one side, you can pry, it, pry the axle into it and it'll snap closed. And it'll hold the axle inside that straw without any glue or anything. We'll do that in another wheel swap. Every time I've done this so far, we've been having to shorten our axles. One of these days I'll do a wheel swap where we don't have to shorten the axle. And that's an even easier wheel swap. But you can still use these straws for that as well in a different way. Okay, I've got the axle in place. We're going to flush it up on one side. Just flush with the chassis. You can take your razor knife and just slice the other side. Or in this case, I'm going to mark it with a sharpie. And then I'm going to just follow my line that I made and cut the axle right there. I've got my line there. I've got my razor knife. These cut really easy. Just press straight down firmly. Try to keep your knife as straight as possible. You want the end of the straw to be square. If you cut it crooked, it could affect the way your wheel spins. So try to cut the end square. Okay, I've got it cut. It fits in there. We're going to do the same process to the back. Once we have them fitted and they look square and straight, we'll glue them down. Do the same thing for the back now. Flush it up on one side. Hit it with the Sharpie. And then I'm going to make that cut as straight as possible. If it's not straight and you don't want to cut a new one, you can take your file or some sandpaper and straighten it right out. So that's no big deal if you cut it crooked. It can easily be straightened out. Uh, this one just snapped right in there. All we got to do now is apply some glue to hold them in place making sure not to get any glue in the holes that we're going to insert the metal rod through. In fact, if you can get these to fit in here tightly without glue, I wouldn't glue them yet. We'll go ahead and cut our axle and, and place the wheels on here and do a dry run and make sure everything's square and nothing needs adjusted before we apply any glue. Okay, our next step is going to be to cut our axle. I like to use these wire cutters. They work great for cutting metal and plastic. Small metal. We're going to try to estimate the center here and just snip it right in the middle. 
Same with the other one. Now we have four pieces. And we'll you can see here, this is going to slide right in our tube. We're going to have to shorten these. I'm just going to place them in here so you can see what's going on first. As you can see, they slide right in the straw tube with no problem. And it'll hold the wheel right in there in the new axle in the new location. Same with the back. All right. So far, so good. What you'll have to do now is estimate the center, and we're going to have to trim these axles small enough to fit one on each side. So they fit in there all the way, but don't touch each other. Once you have your four halves from cutting your wheels in half, take a sharpie or something and, and try to find a direct middle. Of your axle. And then we'll... Then you'll place your wheels up here and take the sharpie and mark the axle where the middle is with in, a, in accordance with your black line and then trim these axles again so you can fit one on each side without bumping into each other inside the tube. I am going to go ahead and glue the red axles in the place. I don't think they need any more adjusting so I'm going to do that next. Just want to apply a little bit of glue in the area where you're going to put the axle. Most importantly, do not get any glue on the inside of the axle where the hole is for the rod to slide in or you'll have to start over. You don't want to close up that little hole or you'll never get the axle pinned through there. Do the same thing with the back now. All right, I got the red axles glued into place. You can see the black line, which is supposed to indicate the middle. Make sure your pin is slid all the way down inside the tire. You don't want that little nub sticking out any. Place this up here. Take your Sharpie and put the same black line that's on the axle, on the red axle, on the metal axle. Okay, now we have a, hard to see, but we have a black line there that's going to show us where to cut this now. You can cut it slightly shorter if you need to, but you definitely don't want it too long because you don't want the axles to bump into each other inside that red straw. You want everything to fit in there nice and compact. Most importantly, you don't want that stud you don't want this stud sticking out any when you glue this in or when they touch each other because it don't look right. You want that inside there all the way. And what you're going to do is do a, a test fit on both of them before you apply any glue and make sure they fit and that piece doesn't stick out. So far so good. Let's mark this one and do the same thing. Okay, just like the other one, I got my line there. I'm going to cut it right on that line. Again, you may want to wear eye protection when you cut those axles because they will go flying. Okay, that one fits. Alright, they both fit. Make sure that the pin's in all the way on both sides of the wheels. Once you have a dry run like that and you see everything fits, the next step will be to glue them in there in the same, same exact way.
let's move on to the back. Okay, just like we did in the front, this is the back section. I already have the mark on the axle. I've got the stud in there. Make sure it's down in there all the way. Place the wheel. Mark it in the same spot where it was marked on the axle. And then trim it. I don't want to glue the wheels on yet because I'm going to do some more work on the chassis using the Dremel tool and I don't want to damage the wheels but I've got them on the chassis now now at this point if you weren't making a demolition derby car you would just apply a small amount of glue on the tip of the metal axle. Try not to get the glue anywhere but inside the tube. Place it in there. Make sure that the stud is pushed all the way firmly inside the wheel. And let it sit for a couple of seconds before you do anything. You don't want that stud to come out. You want the wheel to seat nicely and straight. I would just let it sit like that for a while with the glue and do that to each wheel and you would be done. But since we're doing a demolition derby car we're not going to put our wheels on permanently yet. We're going to take the Dremel tool and get rid of this front grill area. And I noticed there's a little bit of a weak spot here because I took so much out on the bottom that I need to strengthen this area up a little bit because of that. So, I'm going to do that next. We no longer are going to need the grill area, so we'll take the Dremel tool and remove that. Okay, I fashioned a splint out of a piece of car interior from an old vehicle I didn't need this interior for. It's going to fit over this weakened area from on the front chassis. Slide that over the weakened area with some glue and some baking soda and try to make a permanent repair right there. Put some glue on top right here on these edges. And I'm going to take some baking soda and sprinkle over the glue to make it dry faster and give it a really strong bond. And that should be all the strength we ever need right there. Let that dry for a few moments and then I'll take a brush and clean it off. I'll probably take the same process and do it on the axles on the bottom as well to make sure they never come off. I'll do that next. I just keep a brush handy and I try to dust all this right back into the container. Use it over and over again. Okay, that piece is glued in there, almost welded in there with the baking soda. So we shouldn't have a failure there later. Now, we'll take some more glue, do the same thing, apply a bead of glue on each side of the new axle. Sprinkle over those beads with some baking soda.
Let it dry for a minute or two and then dust it off. All right, we got rid of the headlight and grill assembly in the front, so we might as well try to drill these tail lights out and put three holes on each side and uh, give it more of a realistic look because you would try to get rid of all that stuff for the derby. So we'll remove our chassis. Got a little bit of oil here to put on the drill bit. And then we'll get to drilling. Alright, we got one drawn out. We'll move on to the next one. Alright, we've got two drilled out. On to the third one. Alright, left side's done. Same process for the right. Next I'm going to drill a third hole in the center here to put a chain through to keep the trunk lid down. Alright, I have all the holes drilled for the body panels that will be chained shut or chained down. Still have some holes to make in the hood for some exhaust pipes to come up and a hole in the middle. I put some black dots where I'm going to drill through for the exhaust pipes. They're going to stick out of the hood. We'll probably use the same WD-40 straw for those pipes as well. So I'll get those holes drilled next. The holes drilled for the exhaust pipes. We'll use these tubes to slide up in there and that'll give us our exhaust pipes. We'll paint those a different color. Next we'll drill a hole in the middle and then take a file and make it square. Now I'm going to use a series of files as you can see I've already started and I'm going to file, file these two holes out that I drilled square. The mounting post is getting close by but we can always cut the mounting post out of the way if we need to but I'm going to see how it looks in this area first. So I'm going to keep filing away at this, and then I'll show you the progress as I move along. Alright, after using a series of files, I got a square hole in the hood here that I'm happy with. I think that's a good location. And I don't want to get too close to the mounting post because I don't want to see it from when we, if we're viewing it from above, we don't want to see that. So, we're ready. All we, only thing left to do is the cuts in the back here. We'll tool and put a slice in the body on both sides. If you notice, it might be hard to see here on film, but there's like a casting line right back here by the window post almost at a 45 degree angle. You can see it on both sides. I'm going to take my Dremel tool and put a slice in that same angle going down but not all the way. We don't want to cut the whole back end off. Just enough to manipulate it. So we'll we'll slice it on both sides and then we'll bend the back end up in the air. Alright, we're starting to take shape looking more like a derby car. With the tail lights taken out, the grill and headlight assembly is gone. We got the hole for the hood and chains. 
chains for everywhere. These are just sitting in there temporarily just to give you an idea. I'll have some tubes coming out. I'll find an engine to put in there. Um, yeah, we're moving along well. Now we can do our cuts. And the wheels still aren't glued on yet, but you can see it's going to work well. Okay, now we're ready to make our cuts. I think that's far enough. We definitely don't want to cut all the way through the body or then everything's ruined. Alright, I think we can bend it gently. Okay, we have it elevated, I think just enough to make our statement. Yeah, I'll see how this looks on the chassis and see what we have to do to get the chassis to fit properly. Even though it's probably not necessary, I'm going to try to shave off some of this chrome with the Dremel tool. successfully got rid of the chrome detailing that would be down the sides of the car I think we're ready to lay down our dents with the paper not a different set of wheels for the front I felt those truck tires were just too big for the front when we after you put this chassis in here and adjust the back the rear end has dropped down substantially and made the front end just too high as well. But I think these tires look better. More more room up here to manipulate the front bumper as well. A lot more room. So we're going to go with the smaller tires in the front. And the truck tires in the back. I'm going to go ahead and glue the wheels into place. In case you were wondering about the paper. That's what I used to get the dent look on these other two models that I did videos about as you can see this one has dents in it and that's where we're using the papers to get this dent look if you haven't seen these in the in my other videos you can watch those if you like just go back and look at my videos on demolition derby cars I'll get a playlist together but that's how we're going to get the dents is with the paper. I went ahead and I cut some patterns out here. I have some watered down wood glue and a stiff dry brush. And we're going to use that. And these templates that I already have cut out. To get our dents. Alright, so here's the regular wood glue watered down. I'm going to start with the trunk lid and get the surface wet. If you want, you can apply a little tiny bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid in there. It might help the surface tension of the trunk lid to cover everything more evenly. Just 
just apply your just use your brush we're going to go ahead and just cover these holes right up because once it dries we'll go back and just poke poke through them I like to give some extra paper and let it wrap around the body and help hold it on there I've got some good ruffles there I like that as it dries you can go back and manipulate it a little bit you have a lot of drying time I kinda like how it looks naturally right there kinda looks like ruffled metal to me so I think we'll go with that for the trunk do the same thing here in the front get the area wet you notice I like I say I cut these larger I forgot to get the back I want to fold these under there we go fold the extra pieces under the edges help hold them down same thing here, we're just going to go ahead and cover right over our holes. We can cut those back out later. Remember, you want some ruffle. You want the hood to look buckled so you don't want to press it down all the way everywhere. Have some air bubbles in there holding it up. I like how that looks. I think we'll just leave that be. Yeah. All right. Try not to hit. Try not to hit your trunk or your hood now, because those are wet and fragile. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the driver's side. Same process over and over. Take your time with this, no hurry, You've got plenty of time, you're going to have to let it dry for quite a while when you're done with this. I'm going to flip this over gently because I want to make sure that paper's wrapped around the edges. Especially around the wheels you don't want this this paper gets pretty hard once it dries and you don't want that to rub against your tires so make sure it's pressed in there nicely when you wrap it around the edges helps to kind of use your imagination a little bit where you think it should be dented you can use the brush and achieve that look a little more by giving it more attention Let's move on to the passenger side. Now we're getting less and less places to hold on to, so take your time and try not to mess up your other areas that you've already done.
All right, this can be time consuming. You get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and do some fine tuning after I turn the camera off. When I come back, it will be dry. So take your time, gently manipulate it to get it the way you want it to look, and then just set it somewhere to dry. All right, it's dry. Got some dents here and there. Trunk lid looks good on top. I like how the back turned out here better than on the other side. I think my front end looks too good on the fender, so I cut two more pieces and I'm going to glue two more pieces over the fenders and try to make them look a little more banged up. And then I'll cut the holes back out for the tail lights and the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and do the fenders again. I also found another interior with one seat in it that we're going to put in there. And I accidentally knocked the paper loose on the quarter panel just now in the back, so I'll have to re-glue that. That's the first time that's ever happened. I must have hit it pretty good. I might need to add more glue to my solution. Wouldn't hurt to take sandpaper and rough up the body first. We probably should have done that, but usually that doesn't happen. I think I just hit it on something. But anyway, we'll go ahead and redo the front fender. Sometimes you have to do more than one layer of paper and it also helps give a defining line which you, that you sometimes lose. Alright, I see I got some more depth this time in the fender. I'm happy with that. See if we can get something better going on the other side. Back to the passenger side. There we go, that fender looks smashed. There we go, I like that look better. Alright, it's dry enough to handle again. So I'm going to take this file that has a point on it and poke through all the paper where we drilled our holes. So we'll have access for our chains. On this demolition derby car, I want to put a some kind of a piece of metal across the driver's side door. So I found this chassis and I think this piece here on the edge cut off may work well for that. So I'm going to take a razor knife and trim this out of there and see if we can use it to cover the driver's door.
I applied three dabs of glue on the top and two dabs on the bottom where you see those two tabs. Now I'm going to try to place it in there where I want it without getting it crooked or messing anything up. Let's see if I can do that. Alright, I've got it placed in there. I managed to get it in without getting any glue on the windshield. So I'm not going to mess with it. I think that's good enough. We'll move on to our chains. Or painting out this chrome piece next. Okay, with the windshield in, everything still seems to fit fine. I still didn't put the chassis all the way tight yet in the back here. It's just resting together. Still got to paint the seat and gas tank and put the chains on. I found a number two that's an adhesive material and we're going to use that and make this car number two. Okay we got the number two on there. This is officially going to be car number two. Actually it's car number three. This is the third one that I built but it's going to be number two. All right, got to put the pipes in, and that's about it. Put the pipes in and maybe try to add some little kind of details, maybe some dirt around the edges, make the tires dirty. It's finally finished. Well here they are together, they do look kind of neat all together. Alright, that was a fun build. I can't wait to make another one to be honest. 
look look forward to seeing another one soon hopefully thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you use some of these techniques that you've seen in the videos here please stay safe and healthy and i'll be talking to you soon